Tennessee Wildcast is live on the air with the latest on hunting, fishing, boating, and all things outdoors. Make welcome your host, drummer and outdoor expert novice, Jason Harmon. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Tennessee Wildcast. We're glad you're tuning in. We're live on Facebook, and I uh, hope everybody's having a good uh, a good uh, deer hunting season. Muzzler season's in full swing, and uh, excited about that. We're going to be talking a little bit about that today. Also, uh, winter trout is on the docket for today. Winter trout stock is going to be coming around very soon, and I want you all to be prepared for that. Got Mr. Don King in here helping me host today. How you doing, Don? Doing great, Jason. Thanks for the invite. Glad to be here and looking forward to our guests. Yeah, we're excited. Uh, also have a partnership, pro shop partnership in here today, and that's Mr. Uh, David Daniel. David, how are you? I'm good. Good David, David's going to be uh, talking to us about what's happening in Humphreys County. Humphreys County, visit Humphreys.com uh, is, a, is a partnership uh, sponsor with us, Pro Shop Partner, and uh, we appreciate them. And uh, we want to cover a few things, uh, Humphreys County today. It's amazing what is available in Humphreys County, especially outdoor related. It's just, it's just crazy how much, how much is out there exactly. that you can do. So visit Humphreys.com, a uh, place to find out. Uh, everything going on there but we wanted to highlight uh, deer right now is happening muzzleloader season that's a statewide seasons but it's also going on in, in uh, Humphreys County and and David likes to hunt I do I've already uh, been in the woods quite a bit already this year yeah so uh, have you seen them rutting and running and moving out, out there this year yeah I, you know I think the ruts running a little bit late this year they're, they're not just fired up and I expected that now this coming weekend I think it'll it'll make the turn and we'll start seeing a lot more rut activity but um, and that's just the area that I've hunted in the county, but I'm hearing that at my store um, mm -hmm. from, from other hunters that they don't think they're quite there yet. Yeah. First stop outdoors, right? That's it. Um, so anyway, muzzleloader season is under underway going through the 16th of November, and then you got gun season opening up on the 17th of November, running through the 6th of January, and that'll close out the season, except for that special unit L hunt that happens for, for doe-only private lands hunt. So um, anyway, and then uh, waterfowl. Uh, I don't do a whole lot of waterfowl hunting, and that's coming up uh, at, after Thanksgiving. Uh, there's a two days there after Thanksgiving, over, uh, November the 24th, 25th, and then it'll come into full swing on uh, December 1st and run through the 27th for duck. Uh, for duck. So anyway, what's how's the duck hunting in Humphreys County? It's good. I, you know, I've told you before, Humphreys County is the land of three rivers. We've got the Tennessee River, the Duck River, and the Buffalo River all come together in Humphreys County, and that's what makes, in my opinion, Humphreys County the greatest county in the country much less the state of tennessee yeah. but uh the that so we have the national wildlife refuge there that holds a lot of ducks and that you know that creates helps that flyway and uh, i'm already seeing a lot of mallards and pintails wow uh, this year so uh, i'm excited about duck season it might sure. be good to get out there and hunt with him some well, dog yeah. might make that happen we're, <laughs> we're involved in a couple pretty good duck uh, duck spots so yeah cool. we, can, we can make that happen. that would be sure. fun that would be fun and then your your expertise is, i think is in fishing or at least you have that that little tour that you do and and tournament series there but uh you said the crappie bite is on right now crappie bite has picked up you know i kind of gauge that um I, I don't do a lot of crappie fishing this time of year myself but i sell a lot of minnows at my store at first stop outdoors and minnow sales are up right now this time uh -huh. of year so the the i, I don't think the numbers are uh really really high but the quality is really good i'm talking to guys that are going out and catching 12 and 24 good size crappie so awesome um uh, that's definitely picking up and you know the tournament season is over for bass fishing mm -hmm. uh, as a as a general rule so uh, uh and wintertime bass fishing on kentucky lake and and in the other two rivers is great uh -huh. um so you know folks can get out there and almost have it to themselves this time of year which is one of my favorite times of year to be on the big lake uh, yeah kentucky lake and the river uh, is this is the winter time it's going to be cold but the state record was caught uh, in yeah. february i think yeah. it was so it's, yeah. the big ones are the big ones are caught december january and february for sure march but the winter months yeah so be committed to get out there that time <laughs> yeah and and let's see there's a big event happening over at the uh, loretta lens ranch uh, it's called the Yamaha Extreme Terrain Challenge. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, of course, there's always something going on at Loretta Lands Ranch there. It's exit 143 off of I-40. You know, that's that's where you get off to come right into the heart of Humphreys County. Highway 13 takes you right in. And, and off of 13 is Loretta Lands Ranch. And they have a lot going on. And their most recent event coming up is this Extreme Terrain Challenge. 
uh, the 16th and 18th, or 16th through 18th of November. Right. And uh, it's for Yamaha owners um, that have a couple different models. And the information can be found at the Extreme Terrain Challenge dot com so mm-hmm. um and I, I it's kind of unique i think it's an unmarked trail or events and um the they're they're guided by gps so it's it's kind of unique that way some challenge that's it. what i was thinking it'd be it might be a challenge to find your way through the course if you can only go by gps to get there right right so anyway that's pretty cool uh and it's and it's limited to certain uh Certain vehicles, only yeah, Yamaha YXZs and, and Wolverines. Yeah, and I, and I believe they're coming from all over the country. Um, you know, they've already had several register for that. So, uh, spectators and participants as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's plenty of lodging there at the the 143 exit, and then uh, in in town at, in Waverly at the the hotel there. So, you know, there's plenty of plenty of things to do for everybody. Cool. All right. Well, hey, if uh, you want to. Be a part of this and uh, check that out. You can go to their website at uh, Extreme or it's X T R E M Terrain Challenge. So uh, probably get there by visit Humphreys.com. But yeah. the Extreme Terrain Challenge spelled with an X there at the beginning. So anyway, check that out uh, if you want to be a part of that. And there's a lot going on at at, at Loretta Lynn's Ranch all the time, especially with the, this kind of stuff. And yeah. Then, Humphreys County's got come to Humphreys County. That's going what, on all the time. We, so. We'd love to have folks come visit us in Humphreys County. Yeah. So, well, anything else you want to add before we get out of here? I'm good. Okay. Good look. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to you guys and uh, holidays. If I don't get to talk to you between now and then, yeah. Thanks, David. Appreciate. We'll that. get you down there on a duck hunt for sure. All right. I think we should all do right. that. We'll, we'll that. do that. <laughs> all right. Well, thank uh, you all. Yeah. Thank you. That's David from Humphreys County, and uh, he's going to. Uh, we're going to switch out here and bring in. Uh, Mr. Brandon Simcox, he's going to talk to us about winter trout. But first, I think it's time for... Oh, you like there, Don? Oh, Jason, I like that. You got the girls choreographed and everything with the background. I like how you dressed them in camo to do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they're off camera. You can't see yeah, them. Yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah. Uh, Hey. Yeah, the little segment we've been trying out. It's what week three, I think we've tried this out, and now we've got some some jingle music going on and some singers with us. So. It is time for TWRA Q and A, uh, and uh, we we've had uh, I kind of polled Claire out at the front desk and uh, to see what what were the hot topics coming in on the phone this week, and uh, she said that the Type ninety four permit. The questions about that, it's a twenty five dollar permit, and it it kind of serves. Uh, one of three or all three purposes uh, serves as a permit for WMAs during quota hunts Mm -hmm. or uh, and that would be supplemental to your to your uh, 01 in in big game Uh, and it also is needed for taking does during rifle season right Uh, and uh, number three, uh, for the private lands in Unidel, the antlerless hunt that's held in January, mm-hmm. you need the 94 permit for that. And, it's, and like I said, it's 25 bucks. Um, second most popular uh, question coming in this week had to do with uh, the field day exemption. And it's a, let's see, I didn't, it's a type... 12, I believe. Um, yeah. And it's it's for uh, people 10 and older who have completed the online hunter ed course but haven't had an opportunity to go to the uh, field day to, to complete that. So if, okay. you, if you, you fill out this form, you uh, pay $12 and you fill out the form and... Uh, submit that to the regional office either electronically or take it by there uh you can uh, be exempted from that that hunter ed requirement uh with that form and third thing that has come in is uh the type 13 uh permit which is also a 12 dollar permit and it has to do with the apprentice license um that's what we call that one it's up to uh, you can use it up to three consecutive years. And what it's really good for, what, what, what I always tell people is, you know, you, you got a buddy you go to church with that's never turkey hunted before. And yeah. you got an opportunity to take him. And, but he's never had hunter ed or she. 
And so all you have to do is uh, go ahead and get that that apprentice license, and that exempts them from Hunter Ed uh, for up to three years. You have to buy it every year, of course, and um, but it also uh, requires that you, being the the experienced hunter, be there with them. And it works well, you know, in in the turkey blind because you you you're right there. You can take immediate action if you need to with the firearm and uh, but anyway that those are the three top questions that have come in uh this week that had to do with hunting and i'm going to transition here yeah, as we do, do this uh do this next one uh let you introduce our guest and then we'll get in get into rope him into this next one okay all right so today uh it's all about winter trout. I think I titled this show uh, Winter Trout Time in Tennessee. So it's football time. It's winter trout time. Yeah, I like uh, it. We're going to talk about winter trout. we got Brandon Simcox. He's our river and streams coordinator, right? Right. right. Yep. Official title. Mm-hmm. And uh, he deals with uh, trout mainly and, and all the, the stream fishing and all that kind of stuff. So he's going to uh, introduce us to a new schedule and uh, all these new features on our website. And uh, we're going to get pretty interactive today. But you have a question. Yeah, then there's always a question comes in. uh and I just like to remind folks that if you take advantage of this winter trout stocking, you do need the trout stamp. So um, you you need the uh, that to supplement your 01 license. Or if you're a sportsman license holder, you don't have to worry about it because that's all inclusive. Right. But the uh, permanent senior citizen license, the Type 166, that's the one you can buy when you turn 65. That includes the trout trout stamp too. So that's that's one of the best buys going on right now so. right right yeah ages 16 to 64 you need the trout stand or right. the trout license but uh, younger than that or older than that the senior citizens license you're covered and and then also even if maybe if you're not into fishing and you just want to maybe check out the winter trout there's the one day all species license that you can get and you're covered there yeah and thanks for clarifying that too until you're 16 you don't need it either right. okay that's yep. that's good that's great for for what we're going to talk to you about today right I've got my hand in any fishing guide in front of me, so I'll make sure hopefully I don't miss anything. Or if there's something we need to look up, we can. Uh, but there's a new one coming out in March, right? Yep. Uh, well, at least it'll probably come out before March, but it'll be effective March 2019. Yeah. That's uh, so all the new regulations. But this one's still your, your current guide up through February 28th. So make sure you got that in front of you. Mm-hmm. Um, I pulled up the website, and we're going to show some stuff there today. But just uh, give us a quick overview what what you're doing up there in the fisheries division yeah well uh so this time of year like y'all said it's it's winter trout season for us the uh kind of tail water stocking and all that we've been doing is slowing down and uh we're moving into this winter trout program and so the winter trout program is was really designed to provide uh trout fishing opportunities in areas that had limited or no trout fishing um uh, within that local area. Uh-huh. Um, and so that's when it was originally started back in the late nineties and has really expanded uh, all across the state. So, so that's where a lot of our time and resources are going right now, <laughs> getting prepared for that. Cause it's a lot of fish that we, that we do put a, out across the state. Yeah. And the hatcheries are, are, uh, I guess pretty busy with this. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. these, these fish that you'll be catching during the winter trout uh, stocking program, are they, uh, national hatcheries? So they, state they, hatcheries. they come from both. They okay. come from, some come from Dale Hollow National Fish Hatchery, which we just celebrated that yeah. whole partnership with TVA and yeah. all that. It's um, been a couple weeks of trout. Yeah. <laughs> wild um, and then also from uh, Flintville uh, Fish Hatchery here in Region 2. And then uh, we did add a new stocking location this year, and some of those fish will be coming from Buffalo Springs Hatchery in East Tennessee. So. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's uh, let's dive into the website and let's tell people how to get there, if, especially if you're listening on the radio and you're driving down the road, you uh, can't do this live or in the car. <laughs> don't be texting and driving. Don't be searching the, <laughs> the trout stockings on, in the car. But um, you can uh, click on uh, tmwildlife.org. Mm-hmm. That's the main way to get there. And then you uh, got the fishing tab up here. And winter trout stocking is one, two, three, four down. So that's going to get you straight to the schedule. That's straight to the schedule. But yeah. I like to click the more info button, and then uh, oh, there, there you are <laughs> on the fishing page. You're Mr. Henniger, the uh, assistant chief. And uh, I'd like to hit trout stocking streams and reports right in the middle, right at the top of that page, and and that gives us the the trout fishing in Tennessee page. Mm-hmm. So um, and there's a little video that you can watch uh, that uh, Mr. Um, Barry Cross put together last year, I guess, right. at some point. Yeah. And uh, kind of get an idea of what winter trout's like. Uh, 
but right here is the schedule on this page. Can kind of navigate us or give us some ideas of what they're going to find right here. Yeah, so the certainly the trout fishing page has evolved quite a bit here uh, recently, and really that's you know with TWRA, it's it's you know our goal to provide uh, you know easy access and make sure that the anglers know you know the opportunities that are out there. Um, and so uh, on the page now, you, you know, you can find all the schedules on the one page. You can find information about the trout species that we have in Tennessee, um, maps of all the stocking locations. Uh, one thing that came about, I was getting a lot of calls about when did we la uh, last stock locations. And so now I update our trout stocking report every Friday. So as information comes in from the hatchery, that's updated. So if you want to see when the, uh, you know, Tumbling Creek in Humphreys County was last stock. You can uh, you can pull that up and see you know the date that it that uh, those fish went in right and here so, on the website. Yep. So it's all right there. Um, I said it's just an op you know it's our goal to provide you know as much information to the anglers out there. And myself as an angler, I, you know it it benefits me too. So. Yeah, it's it's great to have somebody like you in there that that loves to fish mm -hmm. and also but also is the expert behind the doll and and you kind of know what's needed on both ends and right. that helps. Yep try to provide the best, best customer service we can for these folks and i was just looking if you're looking online if you're watching uh there's the or if you can enter your region or your destination or your stocking dates and kind of find mm -hmm. find the reports for the areas you're concerned about right so, yeah and sometimes cool. those can change a little bit depending on weather and in i don't know water water quality and that kind of thing so right sometimes right uh, you know, with the winter trout program, we uh, we announce the day of stocking, but uh -huh. some of ours uh, that we, we you know we're not able to do that with working with Dale Hollow National Fish Hatchery. You know, things change with them, and so they need specific uh, you know need to go out certain days, and so things may change for them. And so that's a great opportunity if you want to pull up uh, some of the locations that they might stock that we don't have announced, or that there might have been potential changes, or because we have some leeway when those stocking. You know, you can you can find that exact day and, and know the, when. Uh, the good thing is when you find a local spot where the stocking is taking place, you know that's not going to be the only time they do it. The right. throughout the year, right? You know, so that so it's good to go back to your to your local spot. You know, mm -hmm. I I know right here in Nashville at Shelby Park. You know, that's been a very popular, very spot. popular. Yeah, we went out there actually this past year and talked to anglers and see how it was going, and they did they were doing very well. Yeah, very it's, well. You usually have a welcoming committee when the truck pulls up there, <laughs> yeah, don't you? Yeah. Seems like it was a little rainy last year, too, on that. It was. I mean, I'm sure you stock it multiple yeah. times, maybe, but the one where I went out there, and we did a little Facebook Live, it was misting and raining, and uh -huh. it's, it's still yeah. fun. We had a really cold winter last year, too, and, I mean, there was people out there trying to break ice to be able to get their <laughs> get their lines in. Shelby, Shelby Park was froze over. It was froze over all across the state. Oh, and, man. Uh, yeah, it was... Funny. So there's a few challenges you might run into <laughs> yeah. when you're when you're winter trout fishing. Yeah. So well let's let's pull up the schedule uh, and get and check out this new. It's gonna be color coded. Look at that man alive! Man. Oh wow, that looks good. Somebody's been doing some work on that. That is that's impressive. All right, let me see if I can zoom it in and we can get a little little closer look here. Yeah. So in the past, the schedule was just kind of listed by date. Um, there was no real rhyme or reason to. Uh, the locations and so it, it even for me as an angler uh, and coming back to Tennessee uh -huh. you know, moving back three years ago it was a little difficult to find some of the locations you know directly around me it just got kind of convoluted so this year we tried to kind of organize that to where you can look by region and it's organized by date um, so if you know you're in west in region one in west Tennessee or uh, on the plateau in region three you can just go straight to that by month and you'll see all the ones listed specifically for your area. Wow, that's awesome! Very uh, printable too. I noticed the, the PDF document. And you can just shoot that to your printer mm -hmm. and keep it in your car or truck. And yep. So uh, I like the color coding. It makes it easier to read. Uh, yeah. And, you know, find your region or area, find the divisions between the different days and and locations and. So it looks like our winter trout stocking is going to fire up on the 27th. Is that what, is 27th, that what yep, yep, statewide. 27th, 27th. of November. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, so we just talked about a Shelby Bottom. So, folks, yeah, definitely in the Nashville area, be ready. There it is. They'll be there. I know that. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, but an another thing that we added to the schedule, though, um, if you don't know where Shelby Bottoms is or any of the other ones on there, you can actually go on and now just click the name. And the map has to think a little bit to get back into it, but uh, it'll uh, zoom you right into the location, and you actually see over there um, the black, the, the, the fish symbol 
is uh, where we stock it. And so you can click on that. You can get Google directions from your location and all that, and it'll take you uh, That's right there. That's impressive. That's so, really impressive. A lot of thanks to the GIS folks downstairs. Right, Tracy yeah. and Lynn and all of them mm-hmm. down there, they do a great job. And uh, give us stuff like this for the, mm-hmm. for the sportsmen and fishermen of Tennessee. It's uh, – that's handy right there. Yeah, like I said, it's it's a big help, and and it was a big help for me too. Saying re trying to you know learn the area, a new area for me, or you know it's good for folks that you know just you know are just trying to get into it, trying yeah. to figure it out. So let's um, do that again. Let's back up. I'm back up to the uh, to the to the PDF and zoom in on, uh, uh, and let's see if we can pick one maybe that's a different uh, different area. So that was that was region two. Let's go. Let's go out to Fountain City. Yeah, and that's actually a new stocking that we're adding this year. You know, it, originally we have been stocking in locations that provided opportunities for, for people that didn't have, you know, trout in the area. But that kind of mindset is evolving a little bit, and we're trying to provide opportunities to folks that would, would may be a little intimidated to go out and try to, you know, you have to have waders. You feel like you got to go out into the big tailwaters, mm-hmm. which can certainly, you know, be a little intimidating. So, um you know, these, these opportunities in the winter trout program are, you know, usually located within the city, have really good bank access. You know, you can sit on the bank. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, a really easy opportunity for you. So we're, we're trying to expand that now, and we're p- providing an opportunity in, in Knoxville. I um, love the year. descriptions on the map, too. You click on that, the little fish symbol mm-hmm. that, that Jason's describing here, and then it, it gives you the, the you know, what what's available there and, and what you'll need and that mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah, you got so. your lat long and your and your Google directions and right. trout regs. You can click and see the regs and uh, all right there. Parking yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's all all the information you need to know about that area and and your and your regs are right there. Right. Yep. And so for the winter trout, the uh, the regulations for trout, it's a seven fish bag limit uh, with no size limit. Uh-huh. So yep. So you can go out and you you harvest your seven fish for the day and. Come back the next and do it again. Can you remind them again what permits are needed for that? Yeah, so if ages 16 to 64, you'll need the, the trout license, uh, supplemental to your uh, regular fishing license, hunting and fishing license. Um, but if you have the sportsman's license, lifetime sportsman's license, you're covered. Mm-hmm. Um, you can get the one-day permit, uh, all-species permit, or uh, the senior, senior citizen's license covers that too. So over the age of 64, you don't need the, the trout license. Cool. And th- go ahead, Don. I was just thinking, we were talking earlier uh, today, I think, I don't think we did this on the air, so to speak, but uh, we were talking about the size of the fish that mm-hmm. are, that are going to be stocked this year. Tell right. us a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, so, you know, we'll have the traditional fish, you know, usually around the 8 to 10 inch uh, uh-huh. rainbow trout that we do stock. Um, and then we also stock our bonus fish, you know, and some of those fish can can range up to five, six pounds. I mean, they the hatcheries <laughs> grow some big fish for that, and uh, it's always exciting to talk to anglers out on the on the ponds that or the streams too that we stock in the winter trout program that uh, they catch those because they are enormous. Yeah, they are very big. And then last year we did have the opportunity to stock the albino trout actually out there. Unfortunately, we didn't. We weren't able to get our hands on any albinos this year, so we won't uh, won't be stocking many of those um, this year like we did last year. But uh-huh. uh, yeah, there there will definitely be opportunities to catch some some real monsters. Now, are the the bonus fish you were talking about? Are those brood stock that are being kind of um, recycled? Or? No. So the you know we'll get our fish and the the hatcheries will actually hold them over for oh, okay. for a, an, another year and put. Uh, put additional growth on them i got you so that's where the majority of those fish are coming we do get brood fish uh from you know some of the national fish hatcheries that are that do the the actual trout spawning Uh um but the majority of our hatcheries uh are we if we we get fish from dale hollow and grow them out and stock them or we get eggs from from directly from the national fish hatchery and then we we grow them from egg Uh so yeah, we're not doing, you know, physically doing the spawning at right. ours. but Right. So mm-hmm. let's give away a secret. Uh, you're a fisherman, but you're also a biologist. You have to tell us this. What kind of uh, bait <laughs> What kind of bait do these guys going <laughs> to need to catch these winter trout? <laughs> you know, it can really vary. And as I'm learning, I mean, it's kind of funny. So going back, I actually used to fish the winter trout program long before I knew I was going to be a biologist. I, in high school, I'd go to a pond in Germantown, Tennessee, sure. and, and fish it, you know, before I even knew what a fisheries biologist was. Um, and so in ponds, I, I'm, I'm learning that kind of 
I like to do the still fishing there. So, you know, a lot of people use corn or power bait or, uh, you know, trout or salmon eggs, uh-huh. or things like that. But uh, really inline spinners work also. And when I fished some of the trout streams that we stock in the wintertime, so like the Percy Priest tailwater is uh-huh. part of the winter trout program and McCutcheon Creek um, and Spring Hill, uh, I like to use inline spinners or like small trout jigs, like the trout magnet, things like that. So it's a little bit more um, active fishing in there. But uh, like I said on the ponds, I like to kind of still fish and relax and sit on the bank. Uh-huh. And and it, and the, the fish will come in waves. It seems like yeah, they'll you'll be it'll be real hot and then it'll kind of slow down for a while and it's almost like those fish are just kind of working their way around the pond and here they come again <laughs> and it just picks up real quick and uh, yeah. but. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's kind of my tactics. I switch it up depending on what's really the situation. Cool. And when you say steel fish, you under a float? A float, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can and and I do see a lot of anglers actually just fishing almost like a, you know, like a split shot, like almost a catfish type rig okay, or, yeah. or a Carolina rig, you know, a split shot with a, you know, with a hook, uh-huh. but uh um, I usually use light line, 2 pounds up to probably 6 pound test, um small hooks uh-huh. and and yeah, all right. it's you, fun. It's a fun time. There's all the secrets right mm-hmm. there. <laughs> Seven fish a day. Yeah. And uh, boy, nice meal. Yeah. If you catch it the is. big ones, surely that's going to fill the, the skillet pretty quick. Heck yeah. 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 Uh, well, before we run out of time, you mentioned delayed harvest. And mm-hmm. tell us about what, what delayed harvest is and, and how people can enjoy that. Yeah. So the, uh, we're, in, we're in delayed harvest season also for some of our water bodies. And so that. Uh, it's just an opportunity. It's catch and release only. Um, it allows us to utilize less fish, but we stock larger fish in there this time of year. And so rivers like the Hawassi, uh, Teleco, um, let's see, Paint Creek, Buffalo Creek, all, all those are listed in the guide. Yeah, but there's yeah. several this time of year, and those will go on to, they vary, but from January to, to uh, mid March or so, uh-huh. uh, the late harvest season ends, and then. Uh, you're allowed to start harvesting fish again in in those areas. Yeah, cool. All right, well, you heard it all right here. Tennessee Wildcast, Mr. Brandon Simcox, River Streams Coordinator. All the the tips and tricks for winter trout and delayed harvest. And uh, and looking forward to this season of winter trout fishing. Yeah, me too. Uh, Check our website, tnwildlife.org, for the schedules and all the information on that. And uh, anything you want to add, Don? No, just uh, appreciate Brandon coming in today. It was a lot of fun. Yep. All right. Well, we thank y'all for listening, and we look forward to the next edition of Tennessee Wildcast. Keep coming back, and uh, y'all hang in it. Thanks for tuning in. Stay connected with TWRA by visiting our website at tnwildlife.org. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hey, it's all about Tennessee wildlife. It's what we do. Tennessee Wildcast will be on the air again next week. We'll see you then.